Hi, my name is Monty Tilsner with the Iowa High School Athletic Association. This will be our week eight training tape uh, with 10 plays from uh, games around the state from week eight. So let's go ahead and get started. Our first play here was one that was uh, sent in to me by a crew with their crew evaluation, which uh, is a great thing for crews to be doing to continue to improve throughout the week and throughout the season. So the question here was by the crew, uh, does the defenseless receiver rule apply to a tip ball? This pass is tipped by the D line. And um, then uh, what you don't see is they got a taunting flag on uh, defensive back number three. So he says, after talking about this with other officials, they thought it was like 50-50 of defenseless or not. And they all agree that you cannot have OPI or DPI with the tip ball, which is true. That's great that that, that rule was um, was one that was known. Uh, I'm going to try to clarify the fact that uh, we want this 100% to know we can have a personal foul for illegal personal contact against the defenseless receiver, even if the ball gets tipped. Okay, there's nothing in that rule that says if the ball the ball has to legally cross line of scrimmage for this to happen, like with OPI and DPI. So. Um, it is correct you can't have OPI or DPI with the ball being tipped, but you can have a foul for illegal personal contact against the defenseless receiver. Um, in this example, on this play, we have no foul because the defender definitely leads um, with and pushes with open hands, and that's one of the, the, the things that makes it where this is not a foul. So, And then my, my last note here, always good to get a taunting. So we don't want to miss those taunting against opponents. So you can see there, if I go back here, this defender uh, definitely has his hands out in front, Lead not only leads with his hands, but doesn't have his hands out in front and crunch with the body, which still would be a foul. He uses those open hands to push this defender to the ground, and it's not near as forcible contact then either. Uh, we know that he could also wrap up. He could hit him as hard as he wants to if he wraps him up. And it's also not a foul um, if he would be playing the ball and trying to get an interception and there's a lot of contact. So uh, good job by the crew. And uh, again, thank you for, for sending this in. Next one is uh, correct call and penalty enforcement for illegal personal contact against a defenseless player. That's exactly what we were talking about the last play. This one is uh, correctly called a foul and properly enforced. So you can see the difference between this one. Again, just looking here, what we have is we just have this player is just launching and, and with his shoulder forcibly contacting this receiver, knocking him down to the ground, and that is a foul. So remember, to not be a foul per Rule 216D, the contact needs to be making a play on the ball, like he's drawn for an interception. You can have a lot of forcible contact if they both come together making a play on the ball and trying to intercept it with no foul. Initiating with open hands, and that open hands is what makes the contact and pushes that player, which is what we saw in the last play, or a wrap-up tackle. And we do not have any of those on this one, so we do have a foul. We have a completed catch at the 24 yard line. So we know then we're gonna tack on that 15 yards from the succeeding spot. So we're gonna go from the 24 to the 39 at position five. And since we had a, uh, a, a completed pass inbounds, the clock will start on the ready for play. So excellent uh, job by the crew, handled very, very well. Next play we have, uh, uh, this is just a really good no call for offensive holding on the right tackle. And we know that they always, they, they're always grabbing. It's, it's do they restrict them? And really a lot of it is when they let them go. So in this case, he lets them go right at the proper time to not have a restriction at that point of attack that we, when we want to flag down. And then uh, again, good, very good mechanics by our line judge to angle back to uh, when, when he goes to that goal line to be angling back all the way. You can see they've already moved the G way back by the track. Great job. And we did the same thing on this side. So when we angle back, we don't have to worry about one hitting that G. And two, if we don't angle back, we can get taken out and possibly injured like we saw on a play a couple of weeks ago. So uh, one comment I do have here, these guys, 
uh, we just try to get everyone out of the 10. So once we get to the 10 yard line, ball boys, whoever, just ask them to move outside the 10 yard line. That way you can move, not have to worry about it. Keep everyone safe. We continue with the play. Um, let's go back and take a look, first of all, at the right tackle here. And this is what we're gonna be talking about. Watch this block. Again, just not enough there for a hold. Very slight restriction, but he really lets him go at the proper time. And here's our, our movement by our line judge. Let's look at him. See how he's diagonaling back and getting way back, in the, even at that back restraining line. That way, if they come right at the pylon, he has good depth to be able to see what's going on, and he's out of harm's way. They don't make it to the goal line, so he comes back, squares it off. That's exactly what we want. Excellent job by the crew. Next play. Um, this is one where, where we would want an offensive hold called. It is in the open field. We know we want those to be big. We know we want those to, to have an impact on the play. This one does. So this would have to be called by our back judge. Back judge does a nice job. He's working his way up to the goal line here. Once he sees this, this uh, ball is going to be um, either run or uh, yeah, it's going to be run. And so he's working his way up to the goal line, but that's what he would have to be looking at. He needs to know that our short ring is going to be on this action around the runner. And th this really is the, the block you know, there's no potential for a block here. This defender or this offensive player, um, you know, we're, we're good there, it looks like. This is the one that's going to be more jump out at us. And let's just watch that. Um, and we do want to be big, but he spins the guy around and still holds him, still holds him. And that guy can't make a play on, on that uh, runner at all. So this is one that is big enough. We would want that to be called. And... Penalty enforcement, if it is called, the basic spot's into the run, which is the goal line. The foul's by the team in possession behind the basic spot, so we will enforce it from the spot of the foul. So we're going to go from the 2 to the 12 after the enforcement for the hold. Um, it will still be a first down because the line to gain was a 12. So um, even if this would have been a third down play, this would have been a third down play after penalty enforcement since they reached the line to gain, it would be a first down. Uh, since the play ended in a score, the clock would be on the snap. Remember, that is a um, an absolute. Uh, never changes with that. If we have a, a scoring play, we're going to be on the snap. A couple plays with uh, uh, rugby punters. And remember, um, there's no roughing on a kicker if he's outside the free blocking zone and kicking rugby style because it's not obvious a kick will be made. He would have to be dead stopped and take his normal two steps before we would consider that to be obvious a kick will be made. We do have a flag thrown on this play and then great crew communication and they talked about it and decided, nope, we, uh, that we remember that now. We can't have roughing in this case because it's not obvious a kick will be made. Flag comes out, crew talks about it, picks up the flag, very good job by the crew. Uh, same situation here, uh, another rugby one. And just want to point out a couple things here. Um, again, we're not going to have uh, roughing because he's outside the free blocking zone, so it's not obvious a kick will be made. Next point is once we see this guy running and not just taking one step, two step kick, we don't want our line of scrimmage official here who's starting to release. We don't want our L to go. Okay. We do want our H. I'm sorry. We want our, our H to hold. We do want our L to go at the snap. He's doing a good job. We would want him to be going hard downfield, um, anticipating that they are going to kick this ball, even though they're starting to run with it. And But this um, H, we would want to hold the line of scrimmage right here. Um, and... To, you can be the one to judge if he kicks it beyond the line of scrimmage. And if he is completely beyond the line of scrimmage, uh, or when, if he's beyond the line of scrimmage when he makes this kick, the penalty enforcement in high school football is 
It is a 10 yard foul from the spot of the kick. And um, you would repeat the down. So there's a decent chance that they might want to decline this, uh, depending on the kick. But you want to let the coach know, hey, we'll back them up 10 from that illegal kick. And then um, they, they can, you know, they'll fourth down again. Or the other one is you have to decline that foul. We do not, are not able to tack this on, uh, this foul by Team K, because it was not during a legal kick. It was an illegal kick. And that's why you don't have that tack on option like you normally do. So again, a uh, flag was initially thrown. There goes the flag. Who talked about it and remembered, and they picked it up. So good, good job. A couple of good examples of rugby kicks not being roughing. Another kick play, and this is where all the weird stuff happens. So uh, this is just a really good call by our umpire. And um, at minimum, we need to sideline warnings. So you'll see that as we go throughout the play here. So we've got a uh, good punt here. Good job by our, our uh, line judge coming down. We want to keep going here. But uh, umpire, good mechanic like we talked about. He started out, you know, about six, seven yards. He moved up closer to the line of scrimmage, and now he's able to pivot. And now he just continues to officiate. Okay? We want our, our line judges to keep going here. Don't stop. All right? We want you to keep going. Even if you're moving this way, when they're starting to move this way, that's going to help you get behind it and trail it. Uh, good position on a deep kick by our back judge. Beanbag goes down. And now here is, I mean, we have a coach. We are in the white. We have a coach in front of us. I mean, at best, this is a sideline warning, all right? And um, sideline interference, 15-yard unsportsmanlike would be warranted, you know, if you want to go that route as well. You certainly can go with the sideline warning if you want. Um, that will get their attention. But uh, you can see there's a lot, a lot of problems with, with that coach being there, okay? This is a great pickup by our umpire. He's looking out in front, point of attack. Um, he knows that the the line judge here has the um, you know out of bounds and has the spot, so um, he's looking ahead and he's going to see this block in the back right here. So let's let's go forward and take a look at this block. First of all, um, it's it's hard to see. They, we just get the end of it. it was a hold. My bad. You can see it. it you know, you can see he he throws this guy down. Um, we don't see the whole action, but. You get a pretty good idea there that that did happen. Our umpire has a great look at it, and he's thrown on it um, right now. His, his flag is coming out right now. There it goes. Okay, and let's talk about penalty enforcement. This guy does score. Okay, wouldn't really matter if he scored or got down to the 5 or the 10. Penalty enforcement, remember, um, we've got the basic spot being in the run. Fouls by the team possession behind the basic spot. We're going to force it from the spot of the foul, which was a 24. We're going to go back to the 34. And this will be first and 10 from the 34. Clock will be on the snap because we had a legal kick play. Um, and also we had a score. But either one of those would make it where we'd be on the snap. This is an important part. If you went with an unsportsmanlike for sideline interference, that is a, a dead ball foul. It's enforced as a dead ball foul. Live ball enforces a dead ball, 15 yards from the succeeding spot. So now we were already went back from the 24 to the 34. So now we're going to go 34, 15 back to the 51, and we're still going to be on the snap. So why am I saying the 51? When we cross the 50-yard line, it, it's just easy to talk about like the 51 or the 58, and that gets us on the correct side of the 50 for knowing, hey, are we on the short side, long side? We call it positive 51 if it's the short or a positive like 45, if it's you know 45 going in, the negative 45, if it's a 45 going you know, uh, 55 yards. So if we talk about the 51, 58, it's easy to convert that to the negative 48 or the 58 being the negative 42. So just something to keep in mind. But well handled uh, by the umpire. And again, um, you got to do something, at least talk to that coach and, and give him a warning for that sideline. Next play, we have uh, 
The targeting foul should have been called. The crew went with the illegal contact against an offenseless player. Now, that actually was a foul that you could go with, but we want this to be targeting. And uh, this would be one that we would actually support an ejection for. The association said that they would support an ejection, and we'll talk about why when we see this. So going through here, there it is against the quarterback, okay? So uh, let's just look at my comment here, and then we'll go back and take a look in slow motion. Why would the association support targeting? That's because this is not even remotely how you tackle a player. He simply uh, uses the crown of his helmet, launches, delivers a forcible blow to the helmet of the passer. There is nothing but trying to punish this player. It could easily lead to um, a, a severe injury. That's why an ejection would have been supported. So now if I go back and we look at this in slow motion, um, he definitely is a defenseless player. So let's say he didn't lead with the crown and all that. We we could have, you know, we would have roughing the passer, uh, defenseless player. But if you take a look here, you know, that's both feet are off the ground, heads down, ground into the helmet of the player, the passer. And that's why that would be an ejection. We have an incomplete pass. So we're going to go um, 15 yards from the previous spot. And this would result in a first down. Um, if we went roughing the passer, which I would go roughing the passer with targeting, and then you got an automatic first down, even if you would not, uh, the 15 yards would not have got us a first down. If you would go roughing the passing passer with targeting, that would lead to an automatic first down. Okay, um, illegal block in the back uh, during the return by the line judge, and this is exactly where he should be looking. This is a great call. Uh, the back judge could have transitioned to it as well. Um, it would have been a kind of, you know, a one. So at this point, this guy becomes a runner. And at this point, we want our back judges transition to blocks. Um, so a really good pickup by our line judge. But a good position here. We're about seven wide, seven deep. That's where we want to be. Gives him a good angle to see a potential muff. Now he transitions to a runner. This is our guy. He's in chase mode, high potential for a block in the back. And remember, when they are in chase mode, any contact in the back is a foul. So um, I'll just go in slow motion, make it a little easier to see this. Boom, there it is. Two hands in the back. So now we got to be thinking about penalty enforcement. Our announcement to the crew would be, over the O2O would be, during the return, block in the back, return team, number 88, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, and I am moving my flag to the spot. Good chance our flag's not going to be right at the perfect spot. If it's not, just say we're going to move it, move it to that spot. If it would be at the right spot, um, you could just you know continue on with that announcement and say um, we're going to enforce from the spot of the foul. My flag is good, and that tells everybody that we can enforce it from that flag because that is the spot of the foul. Next play, uh, a few things. First of all, let's take a look. This is exactly what we want. Great mechanics by our headline judge. Third down play, we're going to float a line to gain. You can see we've got, what, four, three yards line to gain. So at the snap, immediately he's going to get to that line to gain, he's going to stop, and he's going to hold there. That's what we want. Then we're going to have a hook and turn on this receiver. Now, hook and turn is a challenging DPI call because um, they have the hook a lot. That's just like hands on the waist or around the waist or around the, the – the you know the the upper body that in itself is not a foul we need the turn and we need the turn to be before the ball gets there so in this case this hook helps propel the defender in front of the receiver and that is um you know one indicator of that being a foul and the other one would be if it turns he they might they might not project themselves in front but it might turn that that receiver away from the ball. And that that uh, as well is part of that hook and turn. So uh, really nice call here. Let's take a look at it. Okay, and we can go back and take a look. There's our slow motion. So you know we got the we got the arm around, and again, that is not a foul in itself, but now he he uses this and he does two things. He pulls this receiver back 
And when he pulls his rece this receiver back, he actually is, is projecting himself forward to try to get in front. That is before the ball arrives. So again, penalty enforcement. We know that in high school football, 15 yards in the previous spot. So your announcement to the crew would be uh, pass interference, defense number nine, 15 yards from the previous spot. Uh, we were at the 31, position five. So we're going to go to the 11, position five, incomplete pass. So the clock would be on the snap. I believe that was our last play. So uh, great plays again. Um, a lot of them send in by crews, you know, to the state or to myself. Um, thank you for that. Uh, we're getting down to crunch time. Keep working hard. And keep having great pregames. You know, finish every game's a big game. Doesn't matter if it's for the district championship or if it's by two teams that are towards the bottom of the district. Um, they're important and we need to work them hard all the time. So keep working hard and we will talk to you again next week.